you hear so much about Israel and Gaza in the news, but there are a few things that pro-Palestinians forget to tell you. Here is a quick summary of the things you need to know. Why don't the Palestinians have a state? So you have the Jews and the Arabs fighting over the same piece of land. Why not divide it into two? This smart idea has been proposed a few times throughout history. In 1937 and in 1947, in 2003 and in 2008, the British proposed it, the UN and the Americans. And while the Israelis were willing to compromise and accept this solution, the Palestinians kept saying no to it. By the end of this video, you will understand why. Here is a hint. It is not about the land. You are next. You may well be saying to yourself, who cares? So the Jews and the Arabs are fighting over a piece of land and each thinks that God is on their side and it is all just stupid religious stuff? Well, you are wrong because you may well be next. Hamas and all their friends, ISIS, Hezbollah, Taliban, the Muslim Brotherhood, they all want a Muslim world. They see Spain as a Muslim land and Rome as the capital of the Crusaders, the infidels, and London and Paris and Berlin and Manhattan. They accuse the Jews for wanting to control the world, yet they themselves very clearly state that that's what they want to do. I listen to them, and so should you. Ignoring reality and wishful thinking doesn't make you morally superior. I urge you to go to one of the anti-Israel rallies happening near you and ask the young Muslims, who, by the way, are the fastest growing community in Europe, whether they prefer European democracy or Sharia law, or whether it should be illegal to be gay. Really, just try it and see. Why are there so many Palestinian refugees in the world? Hundreds of millions of people all over the world have become refugees as a result of a war or other disasters from 1945 till today. A UN agency was set up to help all the refugees. And there is also another separate agency called UNRWA for the most privileged refugees in the world, the Palestinians. You are probably asking yourself, why the world needs two agencies? Well, the difference between the agencies is that UNRWA, the agency for the Palestinians, allows the Palestinians to pass their refugee status on to their sons and grandsons and great-grandsons and so on. So instead of putting all the money into helping the real refugees in the world, the UN is pouring money into Gaza, whose people are using this money to finance Hamas, ethnic cleansing, Israel is accused of ethnic cleansing. Let's check the numbers. In 1948, there were 160,000 Israeli Arabs. Today, there are 2 million. In 1967, there were around a million Palestinians. Today, there are 4.5 million. I'm not very good at math, but I do know that 2 million is more than 160,000. Now, let's have a look at the number of Jews in neighboring countries. In Lebanon in 1948, there were 6,000 Jews. Today, there are about 100. In Syria, eight years ago, there were more than 30,000 Jews. Today, there are basically zero. In Egypt in 1940, there were 70,000 Jews. Today, there are three. So yes, there is ethnic cleansing going on in the Middle East, but it is the Muslims who are doing it to the Jews. My next video will be about this very topic. By the way, the 2 million Arabs living in Israel enjoy exactly the same rights as the Jews. Is it all perfect and uncomplicated? No. But if you ask Israeli Arabs where they want to live, in Israel or under Palestinian rule, most of them will choose Israel. Israeli Arabs enjoy more rights and a higher standard of living than any Arabs in the Middle East. Did you know that it was an Arab judge that sent the president of Israel to jail? I guess not. Most Israelis don't know about this either. And you know why? Because what does it matter if the judge was a Jew or an Arab or a Druze? The president was a criminal, so he was sent to jail. Hamas doesn't like gays. You will have seen lots of so-called progressive marching proudly with the Palestinians in 
or Hamas demonstrations. They don't get put on the streets when half a million died in the war in Syria. They didn't demonstrate when Iran murdered girls who refused to cover their hair. Pakistan is about to deport 1.7 million Afghans. I wonder if a single progressive will come out and demonstrate for them. The progressive have apparently decided to team up with Hamas. Do you know what one of the first things Hamas did when it came to power in Gaza was? They rounded up gay men and took them up onto a roof and not to enjoy a roof party, but lesbians are not welcome either. Actually, no progressive ideas are welcome in Gaza. Gaza is not a prison. Is Gaza really the biggest prison camp in the world? Gaza shares border with Israel and Egypt. Israel doesn't control the border with Egypt. So how can it be a prison? Moreover, Hamas, which was elected in 2007, very clearly states that it wants to destroy Israel. And yet Israel continues to provide water, electricity, and aid to Gaza? Have you heard about any other countries that provide humanitarian aid to their enemies? And how about this? Did you know that the daughter of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh was treated in an Israeli hospital? Hamas is one of the richest terror organizations in the world, and Haniyeh has a net worth of four billion dollars. He resides in one of the most expensive hotels in Qatar, while his people are suffering in Gaza. But unlike others who blame Hamas leaders who have billions in the bank and are now living in Qatar and Turkey, I don't blame them. If Hamas enjoys their support of 65% of the people in Gaza, then what is happening is their fault. I will now say a crazy thing that has never been said before by the mainstream media. The people of Gaza are responsible for their situation. I know it's, it's shocking. They aren't choosing terror because they are poor. They are poor because they are choosing terror. Money is not a problem. The people of Gaza get more money from the UN, the Arab countries, European Union, and the US than any other group. But instead of investing in education and infrastructure, they build tunnels and rockets. There is no shortage of that in Gaza. Constitutions. I'm sure you have noticed my heavy yet beautiful Israeli accent. And yes, this is the Israeli perspective. The thing is that after seeing this, you might switch to the BBC and see the other side, the Palestinian side. And you will be like, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? To answer this question, I like to go to the source. Rather than relying on he said, she said, let's look at the basics at what each entity, Israel and Hamas, says about themselves. The Israeli Declaration of Independence says, we extend our hand to all neighboring states and their peoples in an offer of peace and good neighborliness. Israel will ensure complete equality of social and political rights to all its inhabitants, irrespective of religion or race. It will guarantee freedom of religion, conscience, language, education, and culture. The Hamas constitution says, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam obliterates it. There is no solution for the Palestinian problem except by jihad. Jihad is the path and death for the sake of Allah is the lowest of its wishes. This conflict is not about land. It's about values. Jihad, violence, and death versus freedom, equal rights, and peace. Which side are you on? I want to thank my supporters. You keep me going. The success of this video is determined by you. Like it and share it. See you next week. Yalla bye.